Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. We're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts in Central Florida. Today we're learning about Terry Olson, the director of the Orange County Arts and Cultural Affairs Office, and how he segued from a career in theater to a career as a government official. Terry, Yay. <laughs> I'm curious to ask you, what were you like as a child? I was probably precocious. <laughs> um, I like to show off. I wonder why I went into theater. Mm. Um, so you went into theater, but then somehow you went into government. You want to tell us that story? Sure. Well, I had um, produced uh, and been involved in managing SAC for 21 years. Um, been in this community a number of years. And um, I, in the course of our bringing in experts to help with developing, uh, we did some career counseling as well and I had this vision of a, somebody flitting into this meadow and creating an event and the people from the village come out and they're a better village afterwards as the person goes off and um, realized that I didn't necessarily, wasn't crazy about owning things. I liked starting things and getting them going and I'd been involved in starting the Fringe Festival and the Orlando Theater Project and numerous other things around town. So. Um, I got some friends together to say, I'm thinking of leaving SAC, where I've been for 21 years, and um, going to this new thing that's starting the what became the uh, Arts and Cultural Alliance. Mm. And uh, what do you think about that? We prayed about it. They said, I think you should do that. And I told SAC I thought I was leaving for this new position, which didn't exist, and I hadn't applied for it, and they didn't have funding for it. But um, <laughs> within six months, that's what I did. And so for four years, led the Arts and Cultural Alliance, uh, called the Central Florida Theater Alliance to start with. And then we saw that Orange County had a task force looking at arts and culture, and I stuck my nose in there to see what they were doing, and like, we don't need another bureaucrat in our community. Um, and people said, well, why don't you apply for that job? And I said, mm, okay. So I did, <laughs> and um, kind of utilized all my experiences, both in theater and visual arts, music, dance. And it was different going into a big bureaucracy. Some mm -hmm. people, um, like the head of the Edith Bush Foundation thought I wouldn't last very long, <laughs> but I like to play games and I like to figure out what the rules are and win. So um, it's been fun. And I've found, even though people didn't think I would find the kind of support that I have, the county to be very supportive. County government more is about containment of sewers and criminals and traffic and um, zoning and, you know, that kind of thing where the arts is more about expansion and uh, looking beyond. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think partly because of developing trust relationships and meeting people where they are and understanding the rules of the game, I have found great support in the county and the county has become a much greater supporter of the arts mm -hmm. in, in the decade that I've been there. You've mentioned SAC a few times, I think because that was your foundation here with theater. Would you tell us a little bit about what you did with SAC? Sure. Um, well, SAC started in 1977. Uh, some people that had performed together, uh, and Herb Hansen, the founder, got four others of us together, and the five of us went out on the streets of the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. Uh, we had a game called Jacob's Ladder that you can climb up and flip off, and we could make money from that. And we decided to do tell a story and use audience members in the story that we were telling. So it became this interactive thing and really developed that kind of genre for the first time. And um, it was so successful within a year, festivals in other parts of the country were wanting us to come there. And um, within a number of years, we were doing like four festivals on the same weekend kind of thing and lots of people. And Disney saw us performing. They were creating Epcot Center, wondered if we might come there. It was kind of a Commedia uh, spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so we, had a, we moved nine people here for the opening of Epcot Center, had a troop. Within six months, they wanted us to have another troop. We started in Italy with another troop in the UK pavilion. Um, SAC was there for seven years until Disney couldn't stand not having those people be their own employees and um, then created the World Showcase players to continue that kind of style. Which, um, a lot of improvisation. Mm -hmm. Improvisation around a, a central okay. script. I mean, we mm -hmm. got... We learned what worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so as we would tell a story and uh, there'd be a particular punchline, 
if it fit within how that audience was going, we'd use it. If it didn't, we'd, we'd move on to something else. So. Well, the reason why I asked you that is I was kind of curious to know how your background in interactive um, theater and improvisation has helped you in your life and mm -hmm. in your work in your office. Well, the basic philosophy between, be, be, beneath our work with SAC was that we accept people from the audience exactly how, like they are, love them and try to make them the star. Mm -hmm. So it's about um, acceptance. It's about um, going with the flow. If somebody says something that wasn't what we planned, we try to go with that and see where that goes. So uh, it's great lessons for life, and, and SAC continues to do workshops for corporations on how you can use those principles of improvisation mm -hmm. in business and in your life. Well, you mentioned trust relationships. You build good trust relationships, mm -hmm. and I imagine all of that is great. Helps in your current mm -hmm. role. Certainly. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's it just a reminder of how many things are taught to us as life lessons through the arts, like confidence and self-esteem and acceptance and conflict resolution and so many wonderful things. But I'm curious, you know, in your current role, there is a lot of things that you have to do that maybe you don't like to do. What are, what are some things you don't like to do? But then also, what do you still do as your creative outlet to kind of feed your creativity still? Good questions. Well, I don't know if it's so much about what I don't like, but I, I'll tell you a difference. When I was um, an, an arch, entrepreneur um, creating things, I would have great ideas, no resources, and I would just go and try and get it done. Now, if I have an idea, there's a lot of resources that take a long time to access and lots of <laughs> uh, memos and paperwork mm -hmm. and presentations but then it can get done with a higher level. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, but I can't say that I don't enjoy that either because I do like uh, justifying about finding the ways to explain to someone who doesn't understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, why this is important. Is that where you get to be creative? Yes, but also I think in my role, I call myself Orange County's chief arts instigator. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> because I have kind of the platform where I can try to get the arts groups together. For instance, um, when the Shakespeare Theater was doing um, Nicholas Nickleby, this huge production of a Charles Dickens work that's rarely done. Uh, it's like six and a half hours. It was great. Um, we were able to get all the community together and say, hey, let's celebrate Charles Dickens mm -hmm. this year. So other people did Charles Dickens productions or things inspired by Charles Dickens or um, a Dickens Discovery Walk or a Dickens Trivia Night Drawing. or um, drawings, mm -hmm. exhibitions. <laughs> so uh, just kind of instigate to get people working together. And how do you feed your creative soul still outside of the job? Well, I think I get to feed it in my job, mm. um, in, in doing those kind of things. I mean, personally, I've been the person creating the, the trivia nights, mm. which I have great fun, so fun taking themes from Charles Dickens' novels or life and the issues of his times, relating them to something current. So I can ask a current question about Sunrail and then tell a, question, uh, tell a story about how Charles Dickens was a hero in a train accident, um, things like that. Uh, and it, that's great fun. I love doing that. Nice. And Terry, I can tell you, you're one of the most influential people in this area. Whenever you hear about arts, arts and culture or new things starting or I need advice on something, I always hear Terry Olson's Terry name. Olson. So thank you so much for sharing just in this segment a few things about yourself and what has got you to where you are. And when we come back, uh, we're going to find out a little bit about the future, about what Terry thinks is going to be happening in Orlando in the arts and what he hopes to be happening. Thank you for being here.